Cosmology was largely ignored by creation science in its early days, with most of the focus on geology and biology. One reason was the fact that most of the arguments against biblical creation were from the fields of geology and biology, and so most of the focus was in these areas. The issue of being able to see distant starlight was generally dealt with by assuming that God created starlight in transit. As a result, there was little concern with studying what was beyond our solar system. So creation astronomy was largely restricted to the solar system and cosmology was not seen as important. However, with the second generation of creation scientists coming of age, this began to change. Problems in physics as well as cosmology began to be explored. Today, creation science goes well beyond geology and biology, but includes work done in physics, chemistry, and cosmology. The problem of seeing distant starlight has been the single biggest problem for young Earth creationists. The reason is that it is the only really objective evidence for an old universe. This is because a light year is the distance traveled at the speed of light in a vacuum in one year. The result is that light from a star a billion light years away would take a billion years to reach Earth. So the question is, how can we see a galaxy billions of light years away if the universe is less than 10,000 years old? In the 1980s, this problem started being taken seriously, and scientific solutions began being proposed. There have been numerous attempts to solve this problem, most of which never got any degree of acceptance. Regardless of the means, they all fall under one of four categories. Some proposed solutions have gotten a high level of acceptance for a time, while others have not. Those that have had dominance for a time tend to maintain some degree of following, even when better solutions come about. The four types of solutions are the light did not travel the distance, distant stars were created before day one of the creation week, the light got here faster, and time dilation. Every one of these categories has produced theories. However, I am referring only to those that have had a significant amount of support. However, there are several minor ones that have never had much support and so are not worth mentioning. The light did not travel the distance, or the distance is real. One approach has been to question the distances. Proponents of this position ask how accurate can the distance measurements be? This is because large distances cannot be measured directly. The flaw in this argument is that the methods used are based on very reasonable assumptions, and in some distance ranges, they can often be cross-checked by more than one method. It is fairly certain that the distances measured within the universe are accurate to within about a factor of 10, not enough to squeeze the observable universe within 6,000 light years. Mature creation, also known as the created in transit theory. This idea proposes that God created the light from distant stars already in transit between the star and the earth. It is usually justified based on the fact that God created the world functional. Living things were created as adults. This resulted from the necessity of having a functional world. However, there would be no evidence of growth or wear and tear. Geological features were created complete and in place because of the necessity of having a functional world. But there would be no evidence of erosion. The difference is that one was necessary for functionality, while the other is providing false information implying events that never happened. CDK theory. This concept states that the speed of light, C, was faster in the past and has slowed over time. Developed by Barry Setterfield and V.S. Tversky, based on past measurements of the speed of light, it was the first attempt at a scientific solution to this problem. The data showed an apparent decay trend that levels off as time goes on. It had the added benefit of accelerating nuclear decay. Since decay rates are related to the speed of light, this would destroy radiometric dating. Because of questions about the data actually showing a decay pattern, the model has fallen out of favor among creationists, but there are still strong adherents that are trying to test it. The positive result of this model is that it has encouraged serious scientific investigation of this problem. It was a good attempt at a solution, and the first real scientific solution to this problem to be proposed. It is testable, but has problems and does not seem to have worked out. Hence, it is no longer considered a good solution. Time dilation. There have been three main theoretical solutions to this and starlight problem based on time dilation. A pocket of time dilation, which simply has a time dilation zone around the Earth or solar system, which basically places the universe outside the solar system on fast forward. The white hole cosmology, which is based on a bounded expanding universe within general relativity. Cosmological relativity, which, while not developed for the purpose of solving the distant starlight problem, when it is applied to a rapidly expanded banded universe, it provides a solution. 
Dr. Russell Humphreys proposes an interesting answer to the question of how old the universe is. The answer is, by what clock? What this question means is that according to this model, by a clock on Earth, the universe would only be a few thousand years old. However, by a clock at the edge of the universe, it would be billions of years old. The key to this model is the idea that time was much slower on Earth than distant parts of the universe on day four of creation. And what our cosmology has different starting assumptions from the Big Bang. Among other things, this young Earth model is biblical, while the Big Bang is non-biblical. So during the six days of creation on Earth, billions of years passed at the edge of the universe. So that the edge of the universe, when Adam saw it, was six days, Earth standard time. But light from distant stars would still have had time to reach us. The result is that distant objects would appear old. Here is a simple comparison between the Big Bang and white hole cosmologies. Unbounded universe plus relativity equals Big Bang theory. Bounded universe plus relativity equals young Earth theory. Building on the white hole cosmology and refining it leads to a more complete scientific Bible-based cosmology. This cosmology results from the details that are produced from applying general relativity to a bounded universe. By taking what the Bible says about cosmology literally, we have a universe bounded by a large amount of water. Genesis 1, 6-7 And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Genesis 1, 14-16 And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs for seasons, and for days, and for years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Psalms 148, 1-4 Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his hosts, praise ye him, sun and moon, praise him all ye stars of light, praise him ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that are above the heavens. These verses indicate that the universe is bounded by a large amount of water with the earth near the center. When these biblical conditions are plugged into general relativity, the resulting universe easily explains the universe we see around us. It makes several testable predictions. What is particularly notable is the fact that such a cosmology easily explains the Big Bang's biggest failure. While not touted as such, the Type 1a supernovae data that is generally interpreted as an accelerating expansion rate is actually a major and serious failure of the Big Bang. The Big Bang predicted a decelerating expansion rate. This was an epic failure because the results were the opposite of what was predicted by the Big Bang. It was eventually covered up by inventing imaginary dark energy to get rid of the failed prediction. However, a biblical universe bounded by a large amount of water with the Earth near the center naturally explains this data and much more. So, creationist cosmology has come a long way in recent years. Not only can the distant starlight problem be considered solved, but there now exists a creationist cosmology that naturally explains the type 1a supernova data, which represents a major failure of the Big Bang. The result is a scientifically viable creationist cosmology.